I don't even think of it as a job in a traditional sense. My career is what I am as a person. Who doesn't want to have a job like that? Doing something just because it's fun, because you get an idea, is the best part of my job. So my son asked me one day, he's like, Mommy, what grade are you in? And I said I was in grade 23, and he's like, oh, I'll never be a scientist. And uh, my response to him is that I have the best job in the world because my job is to come in to the museum every day and I can learn something I didn't know the day before. I'm an evolutionary biologist and I study birds. I'm really interested in trees of life, so I'm using DNA sequences to assemble species based on how they're related to each other and then on top of that tree I'm interested in why birds might look and sound, behave the way they do. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about something you thought was true, something you saw in your biology textbooks that actually proves to be um, not true. So I had moved to the Field Museum and we have a really great collection of birds from the Caribbean and other parts of the world. It was kind of a series of happenstance events that led us to doing a weekend project. The first sequences of Darwin's finches went in Genbank. And what that means is that they're available for anyone to actually download and use. So we had downloaded the sequences of Darwin's finches that were in GenBank, and then we put them together in a data matrix with all these other disparate sequences that both myself and my friends had gathered. And we did this over a weekend. By Monday, we had something that was completely puzzling about the Tree of Life for Birds, which is that we had a completely new position for Darwin's finches in the Tree of Life for Birds. Even in modern times, you can learn something fundamental about one of the longest and best studied groups of birds. So we found that Darwin's finches aren't finches. We use DNA data to figure out that they're actually tanagers. I think Darwin's finches fit at the level of populations and species, although it does get back to ecosystems and, and diets and stuff like that. So I think that's the beauty of systems biology is once you put people together who don't normally talk, all of a sudden new possibilities arise from research and collaborations. And so that's, I think, the, the real benefit of something like a focus on systems biology. That's a great thing about being a scientist is that there's always lots of things you can learn and your job is to learn them, which is, you know, that's a privilege. My name is Shannon Hackett and I'm an evolutionary biologist that studies birds.